Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be talking about how the nodes are interpreted in Western astrology and Eastern astrology, or tropical astrology and Vedic astrology. Because I mentioned this in my last video and I kind of wanted to just put out some more information. I should probably begin by saying that I'm definitely not well versed in Vedic astrology. Um, I have more knowledge on Western tropical astrology, but this is just what I know as of now based on the research that I've done on the nodes. Um, this is just where I'm at on my knowledge of the nodes and how I've understood why they're interpreted differently. The approach that I've taken to the nodes that has kind of helped me understand them in general, interpreting the nodes in general, stems from, you know, the worldviews of the cultures from which these two versions of astrology are derived. Western tropical astrology tends to interpret the nodes through more individualistic views and Eastern Vedic astrology tends to interpret the nodes through more collectivist views. Now as far as astrology goes, the main way that these two views on the nodes are defined, I guess, is because of how they view time in these cultures. The nodes show the points where the sun and the moon cross paths on the ecliptic, which is our perception of the sun's orbit from Earth, right? The sun doesn't orbit, but Earth's orbit around the sun, that's the ecliptic. And where the moon and the sun cross, that's where the points of the nodes come from. So the sun and the moon themselves, they govern our perception of time, regardless of where we are on earth <laughs> and the nodes themselves are connected to this dynamic because that's how they even exist they're based on the interaction between the sun and the moon and the sun and the moon their own interaction is how we understand and conceptualize time everything in astrology everything in our chart is centered around time because our chart is based on time as it's played out by the sun and the moon i mean you could see this in the the order of the zodiac how aspects occur degrees etc like everything in our chart is based on time as it plays out between the sun and the moon our cultures conception of time determines how we interpret the nodes in western cultures individualistic cultures Time is viewed as linear. We look at time, I say we because I'm in a Western culture, time is future oriented to us because again, it's a linear. So we look at it, we look forward in time and even how we kind of understand happiness, we view it as something that's gonna come in the future. Success is viewed as self-achievement. Because we view time as linear, we understand it as like an end point to something, you know, like reaching an end point in some kind of life goal or life journey or something, or at least a point of ultimate fulfillment and achievement. In Western astrology then, the North Node is interpreted as that end point because You'll notice that a lot of Western astrologers talk about moving beyond the South Node to achieve the North Node because it's your destiny. It's the finish line to us. It's the end point on the timeline of happiness and ultimate fulfillment. So that's why you'll hear that interpretation a lot. Now, Vedic astrology or collectivist cultures, they view time as circular or cyclical. There's more emphasis on the past. So happiness and satisfaction are seen more as fleeting because, again, life is cyclical. Good and bad events are always following one another. Nothing is permanent. Because of this view, the North Node then is interpreted through the original Indian myth, which is Rahu and Ketu, the story of the dragon, um, it was separated by the Hindu god Vishnu. I think that's how you pronounce that. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but he split the dragon, right? So the dragon's body split apart, the head and the tail. Rahu is the head, Ketu is the tail. The dragon then, Rahu and Ketu, became immortalized. They gained 
planetary status. Wahoo, the North Node, exists on a physical plane. It's always consuming because it's the head, so it's always eating. But it can be an empty consumption because it's not attached to its tail. It's not attached to anything. Because it's it's originating in a collectivist culture, it looks at the consumption as more of social trends, right? So it's more focused on what's happening in the collective and consuming that, participating in trends regarding the sign that it's in. But it's empty because it's insatiable. It's never fully satisfied because those trends are an illusion. So in this view, the dragon's head, Rahu, the North Node, is feeding on something that it doesn't know it already has. In the East, there's an emphasis on the past in their conception of time. Vedic astrology emphasizes the South Node more. It kind of places more importance on the South Node, whereas in the West, we're trying to move beyond that. In, the, in Vedic astrology in the East, it's kind of seen in a more positive light, I guess, because it's understood as sitting with what has already been embodied as true wisdom. So in Vedic astrology, the South Node is more spiritual, more contemplative. Both views are relevant, in my opinion, to interpreting the North and the South Node, because the myth itself of Rahu and Ketu originated in the East, so that view is important, but of course, if you want to look at it as your destiny, I mean, that's okay too, It's you're not wrong in viewing it that way, um, because I think both views have something to offer any interpretation of the nodes. Um, they both tie in karma and dharma. Karma is seen through the south node and our dharma is seen through the north node. So they both use that view of, of karma and dharma, but they just kind of use it differently. In the west, again, it's moving beyond karma at the south node through north node dharma work. And in the east, it doesn't always have to reach the north node because the East kind of understands karma as collective wisdom. So I hope that this helps you understand more about how you can interpret the nodes and why both views are important. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.